If you will, please open your Bibles to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 3 is where we'll begin our study um, this morning. Luke 3, 4 through 6. It is good to have you with us here this morning. Um, I cannot think of anything else we can possibly pack into one day, but uh, it is so good to see you. There are a lot of familiar faces here. I don't see here every week, but I want to let you know of something very, very important. This is a good, good place with some really good people. So if you are looking for a church home, congratulations, you found it. A lot of thought went into what is happening today. A lot of prayer continued. And decisions that have been made and are being made in preparation for what is going to transpire. But I want you to know that God's hands are involved. And that means that success will reside. And for that reason, that purpose, I am so excited. For the future of, of this congregation and for the kingdom of God. He tells us at the very last, the very, very end of the Bible. He continues to tell us that we will have the victory. And I'm excited about that. Many more things I'd love to say. Many more stories I'd like to tell. A few I thought of as I was walking up. I thought, oh yes, he's here. i got to talk to tell that story. Yeah, a few. Um, but it, it is so, so good to see you and have you here with us this morning. We live in a world where we're looking for hope. And we live in a world where people are hurting. We live in a world where we're looking for mercy and grace and we want those to reside. And so we look for someone to, or some people to save the day. Save the day. So Hollywood has bombarded us with superhero movies. Superhero movies. I didn't time it out perfectly. Last week, you missed me. I was wearing the Superman tie and the socks. I should have saved it one more week. Should have saved it one more week. Um, but but I'm, I'm a superhero fan. I love the superhero movies, the comics. Um, you're familiar with them. Movies come out every other year, and, and you enjoy them. Superman and the, what was that other one? Oh, yeah, Batman. Um, you know, Flash, um, Captain America, Iron Man. We have all these movies that are coming out about superheroes, because we're looking for answers. Just for a moment in our life, we want to take a break and enjoy someone to come in, swoop in, and save the day. We also live in a world where superheroes do live and reside. I'm not just talking about pandemic, but I'm talking about in life. We have nurses and doctors we have firefighters and we have police officers and people that live their life and make those sacrifices to be able to make us and to prepare and to protect us and to make us safe, to make us better, to make us feel better. That bedside manner is important. These people are heroes. Heroes in our life. There are people in your life, people that you know of, people you look up to, people you respect, that you consider to be your hero. People you admire. People that may have done and made sacrifices and benefit for your life. Someone who may have made an impact in your life and you consider them to be one of your heroes. Maybe it's someone specifically in your life, maybe... You're a sports fan and you think a certain person is, is your hero and that's fine too. But in all reality, there's a chance, small chance here. There are other people who look at you and say, that's my hero. They look at the things that you've done and they look at the steps that you take, the moves you make in your life, and you, they consider you to be their hero. You are the hero to someone else. Well, the fact is, we do live in, the, in a world full of people and heroes and people that make a difference in the lives of others. But there is no better superhero than that 
of the one they call Jesus Christ. The ultimate superhero. And so he takes us down this road, takes us through the journey that we find here in Luke 3, starting in verse 4. And John the baptizer, he's in the wilderness and he's sharing a message. And in verse 4, he kind of explains what's about to occur. And in verse 5 and verse 6, there's a list of the superhero's powers. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about the powers of a superhero? Is there some, one superhero power you would love to have? Whether it's to fly. I always love the flying one. Seems like that'd be fun. Get places quicker, you know, things like that. Um, super strength. You know, you could move anything. Super speed, get there faster than anybody else. You, there may be someone that you think about that, that you think, well, I really wish I had that superpower. But do you know of a superhero that has absolutely no, no green kryptonite in their life? There's no weakness. Nothing gets them down. They're going to win no matter what. You know, in some superhero movies some, these days, sometimes they don't always win. They disappear. It's kind of weird. But that's the movies. Jesus Christ comes to us and sends John the baptizer into that wilderness. And if you follow along with me, we'll read that here. In, in Luke chapter 3, starting in verse 4, he says, A voice is crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Now here's the list. Here it comes. You ready? Here it is. He says, Every valley shall be filled. Every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight and the rough ways smooth. And all the flesh shall, shall see the salvation of God. What John the baptizer, what John has here, he has a singular message. And that message is, you better ready your hearts because King Jesus is on his way. He's going to be here. This whole passage is about a journey. It's about a road. It's about getting somewhere. It's about completing and, and enduring and, and taking part in your personal story that involves our superhero, Jesus Christ. Because, folks, we live in an age of heroes. We live in an age of heroes. And sometimes some people look in the wrong direction for their hero. But I'm telling you right now, Jesus is one who will never let you down. He will never let you down. He will always be there for you. We have folks in our life, even very, this very day, who's hurting, looking for answers. I promise you, Jesus always has the answer the right answer, the comfort that he's going to provide. And that's kind of what we're going to be talking about this morning. Jesus gives us five superpowers. Five superpowers that I really think are going to benefit us in our life as we live for him and, and encourage others to live for him as well. Five things I want to share with you, and then this lesson will be yours. Number one, in Christ I can cross my valleys. In Christ, I can cross my valleys. Notice, he doesn't say, I'm going to take the valleys away. He says, I'm going to fill them up. In Luke 5, in Luke chapter 3, in verse 5, he says, every valley shall be filled. He doesn't say, I'm going to take away the valley. He says, I'm going to fill them up. I'm going to give you an opportunity to make it to the other side. And when you think about valleys, you're dealing with something in your life there's a trial or tribulation that you're facing that maybe only you know about and we don't. But you're still dealing with that thing. There's that thing going on in your life and you're like, what do I do? I got three examples of, of uh, valleys that we deal with and these, these sound real sad. But you should know that the Lord is going to give us a way of escape from these things. The first one we find here is doubt. We doubt our value. We doubt our need. We doubt our abilities, but we shouldn't because he tells us in Romans chapter 8 and verse, verse 28, we all know that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and work according to his purpose. He gives us purpose. He gives us men the mentality to understand and to know that we should never doubt because he gives us value because he depends on us. He needs us. The Lord needs you and needs me to help in spreading his word, in sharing who Jesus is, having that relationship with, with other people, in bringing people to Christ and essentially bringing them to paradise and then to heaven. That's what it's all about. 
He says, I can cross my valleys. He's going to fill it in. And don't doubt your worth. Because he loves you and he's going to take care of you. Not just doubt, but also depression. Sometimes we get depressed. Paul says in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, starting in verse 11, there's a few illustrations here of, of when we get knocked down, we're not out. And he starts here in verse 8. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 8, he says, We are hard-pressed on every side. He's like the walls are coming in. We're hard-pressed on every side. The next phrase is, but not crushed. Hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. You may get down and things may seem like it's bad. It may seem like things are at the worst point. But let me just tell you, the Lord will provide the need because he's going to fill in those valleys. Don't, don't doubt about your value. And don't, don't get depressed about things because he is going to make sure that we're not crushed. He continues in the passage. He says, we are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about in the body, the dying of, of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifest in our body. Jesus Christ is the reason. He is the purpose. He is the outcome by which we shouldn't worry about being sad because he's going to make it a happy occasion. He's going to make it all better in the end. Please understand this world is a temporary situation. We're not meant to be here for very long. We are meant to be in heaven for eternity. And that gives us something to think about. That gives us something to be excited about. So you have doubt. Don't doubt your value. Don't get too depressed over things. I realize things happen, but he's going to carry you through. The third thing, and it is a sad thing, it is death. And that's something that we all have to deal with. Um, we're going to leave this world one day. We have to deal with that, but he gives us some hope here in Psalm chapter 23 and verse 4 where he says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. He loves us. He's going to take care of us. He says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. We don't know the problems, the tribulations you're dealing with in your life, but all that we know is you're going to be able to cross those valleys. He's going to fill them up. The second superpower that Jesus gives to us here is, in Christ I can conquer my mountains. In Christ I can conquer my mountains. You see, just as much as the valleys hit a low point in life, the mountains are an area in which we have to climb to reach the goal. In verse 5, he tells us specifically, he says, every mountain and hill brought low. Again, he doesn't say you're not going to have to climb for things. You're going to have to. Think about when John was preaching. When John was preaching in the Judean desert and he was there in the mountaintop and situations like that, they had, people had to cross parched, hot, sandy mountains and areas and locations to get to hear God's word being preached. People will do crazy things in that day to go and hear Jesus his name being shared. What are we doing today? What mountains are we climbing today? Because they're going to be there. The Lord says, I'm going to make them low for you. If you have that relationship in Christ, and you can say that in Christ, there's two things I think we need to consider um, that wouldn't be a part of this outline. But I want to share this with you. Two things that connect us to Jesus. Number one, it is a relationship with him in being called children of God. Being immersed in water for the remission of our sins puts us in heaven. Gives us the hope of heaven. Gives us that, that chance for, for salvation that he gives us through our faithfulness. So we have to be baptized. We have to be Christians. We have to be called his children. The second part of that, I think, is something I think we all can relate to. And that, that's the fact of this. I need to share who Jesus Christ is in my daily life. I need to share who Jesus Christ is in my daily life because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to deal with some mountains in my life. I'm going to deal with some mountains in my life. I'm going to have to climb them. And the fact of the matter is, for me to be in Christ and to have the benefit of all that, I need to understand. I need to be a child of God and baptized Christian. But after that, it's more than just being here at 1030 on Sunday. It's about what we do between the Sundays. It's about actually talking to my neighbor about Jesus and not pretending like or acting like I've got all the answers, but I've got a Bible, you've got a Bible. Let's sit down and read and study about Jesus. It's an easy way to have a conversation and have a Bible study without 
acting like and pointing a finger that I know it all, you need to come listen to what I'd say. Actually, Jesus knows it all. Let's go and see what he has to say. That's what it comes down to, folks. Being called a child of God and truly, truly sharing you. And by doing that, we're going to conquer those mountains. The third superpower that Jesus gives to us here is that in Christ, I can cancel my cares. In Christ, I can cancel my cares. He tells us there in verse 5, as verse 5 continues, he says, the crooked places shall be made straight. I don't know about you, but I take personal appreciation in this one. And basically, when I leave my mission in following him, he's going to bring me back. He's going to forgive me. He's going to offer that love, that hope, that mercy, that grace we were talking about. He is going to, he's going to take care of those things. The Lord in the life of a Christian is going to save the day. And that's what we need to work on. Continue to keep that in mind. Have you ever heard about people that say, the most important thing in my life is me? It's me. There's three people. Some people say, there's three people in my life that I really, really, truly love. These are really nice folks. Three people. Do you know who they are? Me, myself, and I. That's right. That's right. That person loves themselves a whole lot. I would start out by saying, how about a little humility, first of all? Um, Second of all, I would say, as Christians, we shouldn't be a bunch of meists. Okay? It's not just about me. It's like, what is the church? What can the church do for me? What am I going to get out of what the church gives to me? You know, when am I going to start doing for others? Instead of being a meist, let's start being an usist, which is terrible English. Or othersist. Terrible. You won't find that in the dictionary. That's terrible. But the point I'm trying to make here is. We need to start thinking about other people. Stop worrying about so much about myself. Because if you think about every superhero, they never think about themselves. Jesus Christ, the ultimate superhero, never thought about himself. He was willing to put those nails to his hands and feet. He didn't say, you know, Lord, you got a great plan there. I got the perfect guy for it. <laughs> you know, he, he didn't say that. He went to that cross, and he obeyed his Father. And that's all he's asking us to do is to obey his Father. You know, here's the great thing. The Lord, he's not asking you to take nails in your hands and feet. You notice that? He's not asking you to go through all that because Jesus is the ultimate superhero. He did that so that we wouldn't have to. He took that crown of thorns and thrust upon his head. He did that so you and I wouldn't have to. He took that spear not literally, but someone else took that spear and put it in the side, his side. You know why he did that? So you and I wouldn't have to. He's a superhero. He made the sacrifice so we can live, and we can live more abundantly, and we can have those opportunities so that one day we can all be together again in heaven. That is why he did that. He said, what I can do here is, in Christ, I can cancel my cares because Jesus went to the cross so that I wouldn't have to. I don't care what your past is. I don't care what you're dealing with. But it's one thing you need to understand is that Christ died for you. And God is offering that forgiveness for all of us. But number three, in Christ, I can cancel my cares. Number four, in Christ, I can calm my storms. In Christ, I can calm my storms. Verse 5 continues there where he says, and the rough ways smooth. You see, just as the crooked roads are situations that I did to myself, and he'll bring me back, the rough ways happen. I have no control over those, but he's there to take care of me. He's going he's to bring that, that fulfillment there, and Christ brings that fulfillment. The problem with this is if we decide to look in the world for answers, we're going to be let down every single time. Because the world can't offer you salvation. The world can't offer you mercy. The world can't offer you hope. Jesus Christ does. God does. And one thing that I've noticed, I've noticed this. 
When you look at the narrative and you study through the Bible and you find the mentioning of hell, hellfire and brimstone, condemnation, complete damnation. You know, we've actually been studying about uh, demons and angels and, 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 and the, 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 uh, the afterlife and end of days with our teenagers over the past few months. And, and, and one thing we've noticed is there is a little bit mentioned about hell. It's there, don't get me wrong. But there's a whole lot mentioned about heaven. Have you noticed that? Just think about that just for a minute. Hell is there. But for some reason, as we study and we find and we, we research, God is still working on your eternal life. Have you thought about that? Hell is there. There it is. He's not doing anything of that. It is what it is. But for heaven, he keeps working on it. He is wallpapering your eternity, and he can't wait to see you. He can't wait for you to come home. Paul tells the church in Philippi that, that our citizenship is in heaven. We're not meant to be here for very long. We're sad when we lose loved ones, and it's sad because they're not here with us anymore. But let's be honest. If they're in paradise, I'm sorry, they're not sad. <laughs> they're okay, and we need to live for that day. If you're sad, if, if, if you feel like this world coming to an end, oh, I'm so sad, I don't know what I'm going to do. Really? You don't know what you're going to do? We should be excited about the end of this world. We should be excited about, get this world out of here, I'm ready for some heaven time. You know, heaven time is party time. I'm just letting you know, it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. And I'm not being disrespectful by saying that. I see some frowns, I don't understand. You need to turn them upside down, folks, because heaven is going to be a happy place. And I can't wait to be there. What about you? What about you? Let's talk about it. Let's live that life. That's how we need to be. We need to be excited about it. Don't be hung up. Don't, don't do this. You live your life this way. No one goes to heaven this way. Okay? Remember, hell's there. Heaven is forever. All right? Be excited about it, folks. That's what it's all about. But these things that we have, the truth of the matter is, these, these first four things are things that are provided there, and they're symptoms of the real problem. But here's the real solution. The real solution is number five. The, probably the best part of the, of the superpowers that God, that Christ has as our Savior, number five, in Christ, I can come to God. Who else is going to take you to the Lord in heaven besides Jesus? Any hands? Nope. Because nobody but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. He's the superhero. It's an age of heroes, folks, but Jesus reigns supreme because he's the one that will deliver. He's the one that's going to deliver. He's the one that's going to take care of you, and he's the one who's, who's, who's there for us. And the fact of the matter is, and here we go, the name of Jesus is on the lips of a billion people every second of life. Did you know that? A billion people every second of existence of time, Jesus' name is on their lips. And they all claim to be followers of Christ. Now, wouldn't it be great if that was the truth? Wouldn't it be great if all those billion people all followed Jesus according to his word? Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't it be great if people decided to do what God asked them to do and not decide, you know what, God, that was a good thing and that's okay, but I'd rather do this? Or I know it doesn't say this, so if it doesn't, I guess I can do this and do my own thing here. Don't you wish that, you know, wasn't the case? He gives us an opportunity for life. He presents it to us. Baptism is essential for salvation. He tells us that. If we want to be in Christ, we get to have that. We get to be a part of that, that life that he offers. In 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17, he tells us that if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. As Christians, we're new. And we're part of the family. We're part of the solution. And this is by far the most important decision that you will ever make in your life. Luke 3, verse 6, as we close down this, this, this study, he says, And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. You get to see it. 
In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Everybody reads that. Sometimes old preachers, you know, they'll quote, well, they'll quote that. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. What that means is God keeps his word. God keeps his word. Even when some people don't. Some people count slackness. But it is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. He doesn't want us to suffer. He doesn't want us to hurt. He wants us to have a good life. He wants us to live our best life. And our best life is a life towards heaven. It is creating a culture for me and my family that we attend church on Sundays and Wednesdays and, and we serve God. We visit the sick, we send cards, we make phone calls. We make every connection we possibly can. We talk about Jesus every chance we can. God is interested in salvation. We've been having a study over the past, I guess, month over the book of Ephesians. My understanding is we're studying it in Bible class for the adults and, and from the pulpit. That's probably one of my favorite books. I mean, I say that about every book. I think everybody does. They're all good, right? You heard about the guy who had the Bible, and he says, if I highlighted all the, all the good parts, it's yellow all the way through. Of course. It's a pretty good read. But I love Ephesians chapter 1. Those of you who know me know that. I love Ephesians 1. I believe it's five or six times there in Ephesians 1. The verses are started with the word, in Christ. In Christ. I especially love verse 11. Ephesians 1, verse 11. In Christ, I will receive the inheritance. But only in Christ. Folks, it's a relationship. It's a relationship I have with the superhero of all heroes. It's a relationship that I have that I have been baptized into Christ. And I get to live a life for him. And I get to share that life with others and talk about it and live it. It's not just getting wet. It's not just being buried in water. That's a command and we should do that. But it's also sharing the message. If I do one without the other, what good am I? I've got to follow through and do because our life here is so short. This is an illustration I've used many times, and I've heard many guys use it many times, but I love it. I think it's so effective. There is a lamp on the back, back table. Everybody turn around. Look at the lamp. Lamp on the back table in the corner. Everybody see that lamp? I'm going to take a string. I'm going to wrap a string around. I'm going to tie it to that lamp. The other side of that string, I'm going to take it to this door. I may tie it to that caution um, tape right there. That's the caution deal for the door. And that string is going to sit right across that room. And what I want you to do is consider the fact that over here, an inch off that door is your life. An inch of that string is your life. And the rest of that string represents eternity. In all reality, the string should go over around the world many times over. But this is for, for illustration purposes. The point I'm trying to make here is we spend such a small amount of time on this earth in preparation for such a long time we get to enjoy in heaven. But we only get to enjoy it if we've been baptized into him and share him every day. It's that relationship. It's the superpowers that only Jesus gives to us. Are you living that life? Are you doing those things that many of us uh, have been baptized? The question is, are you living your best life for Jesus? Are you ready to come to Him? Are you ready to, to have that to, to occur? And maybe you haven't. Maybe you're not a Christian. Maybe you have not been baptized into Christ and, and you have some, some things that you need to take care of. This morning is that perfect opportunity. Don't leave here without being able to take care of that because it's an exciting life. It's a great life. Jesus never turned his back on us. May we never turn our back on him. However we can help you, we ask you to come right now as together we stand and sing. When we walk with